volunteers from the King County Voter Research Project zeroed in on the Trailer Inn's RV park in Bellevue after reviewing county election records showing that several voters are registered here. They flagged it as possible fraud by 20 voters who were voting from a business that rents RV spaces in this report submitted to King County Elections, which we received through a records request. We've got people that are overnighters and we've got people that have been here close to 20 years. A spokesperson says the trailer park is home for some people, but the Voter Research Project claimed they violated the requirement that voters register at their actual residential address. We couldn't afford a house when we sold ours back in Utah, so we've been living in this for almost two years. Dustin Reed, who works for the Department of Veterans Affairs, lives with his family of four in this 43-footer. does come to this address. His mail-in ballot to this address is one of the voter anomalies at the trailer park identified in the report. I don't know how they could, you know, say we're ineligible voters if they've never actually come out to actually see, right? I've, I've never met anybody out here to say, do you really live here? King County Elections Headquarters, we asked the director about voters registered at trailer parks. Is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. People can use a non-traditional address here in Washington State to get registered, provide us with a mailing address. In this list, there were voters that are military, overseas, unhoused, or currently have a non-traditional address. So Dustin's voter registration. So for them to say it's we're ineligible is just kind of mind-boggling. And the others here are all legal. With this one stop alone, we've been able to strike 20 names from their voter anomaly list. Voter Research Project says it found 444 registration anomalies in months of door-to-door -door canvassing in King County. My name is Chris Ingalls. I'm a reporter from King TV. How are you? So nobody came to the door asking about a guy named Schomburg. I'm just trying to verify what they've reported. In other areas, like the story we aired from Mason County last month, volunteers listed names, addresses, and specific information in their reports that allowed us to follow up by going door to door. We're just going to several different addresses that they put in their report. But King County Voter Research Project only identified a name and voter ID number. Other than the trailer park, we could not reliably locate other voters in their report. This is a big county. Again, 1.4 million registered voters. Elections Director Julie Wise had her team analyze the Voter Research Project report in which almost all of the listed anomalies are voters who moved but are still registered at their old addresses. I didn't see anything on that list that, um, that voters were doing anything that's illegal or inaccurate. She says the registration information that volunteers relied on was outdated. 90% percent of the voters had updated their address by the time um, that the canvassers went out to look at the addresses. Did you see anything that rises to the level of fraud in their report? I did not see anything in the report that rises to the level of fraud. How many volunteers out on the streets? So we've had roughly up to 50. This is the man behind the report. Boeing retiree Dave Griffin and his volunteers have been combing King County neighborhoods on behalf of the Voter Research Project. We're out looking and trying to help clean up the voter rolls in Washington State. He's undeterred by King County's finding that his canvassing team has uncovered few anomalies, if any. How would you characterize the security of our vote in King County? I think there is a lot of room for improvement. Have you found fraud out there? I don't know if the word fraud is relevant. What is relevant is there are a lot of questions. You say you don't like to use the word fraud, but you know that people, candidates maybe, will take your report and say, this is evidence that my election was stolen. The solution is to have clean voter rolls. And the solution is to have clean elections. What's the one smoking gun? I mean, the one case that you can look at in your report and say, look at this, this is what we're talking about. Griffin pointed us to his report's claim that immigrants, visa holders, are registered to vote unknowingly through the state's motor voter program. Somehow our systems has allowed them to be signed up to vote. Give me those names and addresses and I will check them out. I'm not saying no, I'm saying let me check because I don't want to give out someone else's private information uh, that would put them in jeopardy. 
So we have not heard back from Mr. Griffin since that interview, and he has not responded to my follow-up messages. Now, as you heard in that interview, he says they have lots of questions, and we often hear that from election deniers, but what we've learned from voter research projects reports that we've analyzed so far in King and Mason counties is the answers. There is not any widespread or organized voter fraud. They're just answers that these groups are not willing to accept. So I know you've said in the past that any citizen can challenge a voter's registration and the elections office That's right. will investigate. So did the Voter Research Project file any of these challenges in King County? No. And, you know, I find that odd. You do all this work, right? You make all these allegations, but you don't take the formal step of filing a voter registration challenge, which King County elections would investigate and provide the answers you say you're after. But in Mason and King counties, no one from Voter Research Project has filed a single challenge so far.